Hi everyone, this is six videos about um, applying physics, uh, physics principles in constructing a tube line. Okay, now again we're continuing with this um, uh, end correction um, model. Now we've already um, done the relationship between the end correction and the closed pipe. Uh, in this one, we're actually looking at what's happening in an open pipe. Now, remember, this is the second model that we're looking at, and it's just extension of um, the first model, which was just a simple model that didn't consider much about what was happening between the boundary line of um, a pipe and the dynamics about the pressure um, that occurred between the compression phase and refraction phase of a sound wave. As it interacted with the atmosphere. Okay, and again, there's going to be emphasis in deriving um, the frequency for the open pipe when considering uh, the end correction. Okay. Again, um, the model is understood. Um, to occur at the boundary lines where the open pipe um, meets the atmosphere. So it's this idea that in an open pipe, as that um, sound wave propagates through the pipe, it gets to the far end, that compression phase dissipates into the atmosphere and it ricochets that, um, that refraction um, aspect of the wave back down the, the pipe gets to the end. Now the higher pressure atmosphere floods into that refraction and creates another compression wave and that continues on um, occurring in that open pipe. And what we expect to see is this destructive interference right in the center of the pipe um, and we should have um, that constructive interference in the in the open ends where where our our um, antinodes form and it's important that we look again at this um graphic um, and see how that relates remember we're talking outside the pipe we're at a neutral state where we are at the pressure of the atmosphere in the compression phase we've got a high pressure phase where it's greater than that which is occurring in the atmosphere in the refraction phase, it's negative, it's lower pressure than what's happening in the atmosphere. Now remember the atmosphere is occurring somewhere here, so somewhere here in the homogeneously distributed um, area of particles that should resemble what the pressure is in the atmosphere. Then we have a high pressure and we have a lower pressure. Okay. Again, we just, we, with our first model, we just assumed that um, this exchange um, between, between the, the sound waves in the boundaries um, just occurred there. But in reality, no, that, that's not the case. And because in this instance, we have an open pipe, that end correction occurs in both ends. So not only am I getting it on one end, like I did in the closed pipe, no, because I'm having compression phases and refraction phases um, going back and forth in um, in the creating a standing wave in an open pipe, I'm getting two end correction regions, which are both equal in value, because remember, they're both related to that diameter that they possess. Okay. Now, if we reflect back on um, the expression for the relationship between the wavelength that is created in the open pipe and its, its um, uh, relative ratio to the length of the pipe, um, we can do a little bit of, um, I guess, analysis of the diagram to derive this expression. So everything that's happening on the left side of the equation, that's completely fine. What we need to do is modify what's happening in the length. So our length has increased by two e's. You can see we've got one extra distance here and another extra distance over here. So effectively we've got 
one entire length of the pipe plus these n corrections that have to be considered. So when we add that to um, our expression simplify, this is our new expression. It says um, the ratio between the particular harmonic um, divided by 2 of the wavelength experienced in a pipe has to be equal to the length of the pipe plus the two end corrections that occur in that pipe. Again, this is a constant that's derived by the diameter of the ball in the pipe, and it's given by this factor of 0 0.486 multiplied by the diameter, um, which we have 50 millil uh, millimeter uh, diameter. Okay, all this is in meters. Um, and this is our next expression. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this expression again to derive um, an expression for the frequency um, experienced in an open pipe, which more appropriately considers the end correction that is occurring in that in, the, in that particular pipe. So let's do that now. Okay. So our first equation um, considers the harmonic value divided by 2 of a particular wavelength found in an open pipe. And that's proportional, sorry, that's related to length of the pipe, the pipe um, plus two end correction areas that must be considered. So we'll dub this equation one, and we know our second equation is um, our frequency relationship between the speed of the wave, um, the speed of um, a wave um, in a particular medium. So that's equation number two. And again, we rearrange this for um, uh, our wavelength, which is lambda. So we find out that lambda is equal to 2 times the length plus uh, 2 n corrections divided by the nth harmonic. And what we're going to do is substitute that in there all the way there at the bottom. So let's do that. Frequency is equal to the speed of sound in air divided by 2 L plus 2E over N. That N comes to the numerator, so we end up getting F is equal to the harmonic multiplied by the speed of sound in air uh, divided by 2L plus 2E. Okay. Now remember, all this, this expression can be rearranged back and forth for the different variables. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to get, um, if you wanted to solve for the length, we can simplify this. We can say, um, swap these around, so we get L plus 2E is equal to N divided by V 2F. Okay, now you got this factor here. Um, you could probably add that factor there if you got the diameter of that particular pipe. So we find that the length is equal to plus n multiplied by v 2f minus 2e. And that's definitely something that you can do um, there.